Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to configure GitHub Actions to build and push Docker images that are supported for multiple CPU architectures like AMD64 as well as ARM64, and that's going to be kicked off any time that you push up a Git tag to a specific repo. For example, I have this one web server project up on GitHub here, and when I did a Git push of this tag here, version 0.3.4, that kicked off this workflow that we're going to be going over in this video. And then it produced a new Docker image tag here with the same tag name as well as latest. And we can see that we do have images available for AMD64 as well as ARM64 too. So if you're not familiar with using BuildX, which is a Docker feature that allows you to build images for multiple platforms, etc., then I do suggest checking out a previous video I made. I'll leave a card up for that one. We're going to be focusing mainly on GitHub Actions and pushing things up to the Docker Hub. Although I will mention that if you're not using the Docker Hub, then you will need to make very minor configuration changes to the GitHub Actions file that we're going to go over to log into a different registry. That will be no problem, basically a couple of lines of code. Now, if you're not using GitHub Actions, maybe you're using GitLab or Bitbucket, then you may want to still watch this video because the overall strategy is going to be exactly the same on those CI providers. You'll just need to translate the GitHub Actions YAML syntax to maybe some shell scripting where you can run those raw commands or you can use whatever I don't know, mechanisms are available for those providers to implement the same thing. But yeah, let's go over some of the code here to see how all this works here. We're also going to go over how to wire things up between uh, GitHub and, you know, the Docker Hub as well. It will be expected that you do have a GitHub account as well as a Docker Hub account. Both the free tier is going to be fine if you want to follow along. So inside of your repo, which could be public or private, by the way, we will need to create a YAML file to set up the GitHub action. You know, in this case, you'll want to have a .github slash workflows folder. And within there, you can name these workflows whatever you want. I like to name them to be pretty descriptive of what they are here. You know, in this case, we're going to be focusing on the Docker publish YAML file, which is the one that's going to be building and pushing Docker images to the Docker Hub. You know, feel free to name this whatever you want here. But I will say this, you know, when you go to your actions here on GitHub here, you know, we can see that the workflow names are listed here. So, you know, I name this one Docker publish here, which is going to be seen as Docker publish over here. And if I go to this one here for the one release here, you know, we can see that the file name is also also docker-publish.yaml, which matches the file name that we see here. Cool. So, you know, this file is really only about 36 lines of code. Most of it is sort of YAML boilerplate just for setting up a GitHub action here. And we are going to focus on all these steps here, going into most of the detail on these steps here, because the other stuff is kind of like, eh, like it's all set up for us and uh, cool. So let's just start from the top. I think it's going to be a little bit easier there. And the first thing that we need to do is figure out like, when do we actually want to want this workflow to run? So in this case, we basically have a trigger condition here that says, okay, when we push up a new tag that matches this pattern, then let's go ahead and execute all the steps here in this one job here. And uh, in this case, you know, we have tags that start with the character V. You know, I like to name my tags that start with that. We can see version 0.34, etc. But if you don't want to have that V prefix, then you know what? You can just remove the V there and you're good to go. So it's basically going to be matching all tags that have star, right? I don't really know too many scenarios, at least for me, you know, the workflows I do, you know, any tag that gets pushed will be end up being... Uh, push to the Docker Hub as well. But if you want to do some more advanced filtering there with regular expressions, you know, you can do all of that. That's documented on a GitHub site. Okay, cool. So now we know how this thing is kicked off. And by the way, you know, just to be super explicit in the video, you know, when you push something up to the main branch or the master branch or someone opens up a pull request or something like that, that's not going to kick off the, uh, any of the steps that you see here. It's only when you push a tag, which is nice because, you know, if you have some library like this, you would only want to publish new versions when you cut that release here. But um, yeah, I mean, even if you're pushing versions of a web application, maybe you have some like auto tagging being done in your CI platform. So in other words, like when you're ready to cut a release for maybe every single time that you merge a pull request into the main branch, you can create a tag for that and then also kick things off with the same workflow. But also, you know, if you want to change this so that, I don't know, maybe it kicks off and builds a new image every time you merge to the main branch or commit anything to the main branch, that could be done as well. Cool. Okay. So now let's go over the jobs that are running for this one workflow. And I've named this one build and push image because it's a little bit descriptive of what it's doing. It's basically building and pushing the image up to the Docker Hub. Again, you can name this whatever you want here. And if we go back to here, we can see the job name being named over here. Nice. And then also we need an environment for this whole CI workflow to run in. And in this case, we're using the latest version of Ubuntu. You know, I'm a big fan of using Debian and Ubuntu. Ubuntu is pretty standard on CI, comes with all sorts of different tools that you may need here. And then within that job here, we have a couple of different steps that we can run. So we have things for 
checkout and setting up Qmu or however you want to pronounce that one, which I probably will pronounce about six different times uh, throughout this video here. And then we have another one like setting up um, Docker build X, logging into the Docker hub, and then building and pushing the image tags here. And if we actually go into the actions tab here and take a look at that job, we can see all of those steps being listed exactly how they were typed out here, right? Set up Docker build X, log into Docker hub. You know, these are the names that we have set up here, set up to Docker build X, you know, log into Docker hub. And you can name them again, whatever you want here. And of course you can also expand this out and take a look at some of the outputs here. You know, that's all standard um, GitHub Actions behavior here. So, okay, we have all these different steps here. Let's go over some of them. This is standard boilerplate. You probably find this checkout one in pretty much most GitHub Actions. You know, this checks out your specific uh, commit here for the code that's going to be running in the CI environment. Then we have the Kimu one set up here. These are all uh, Docker, or these are all GitHub Actions created by Docker here. And I will point out that it's really important to note that if you were to Google for something like this, or you know, set up build X action, you will find these available on GitHub, and you can even you know view them on the marketplace. And uh, where I'm going with this one is, it's kind of nice to know if you need to configure one of these things a little bit more in detail. Then um, all the documentation is there. For example, you know, we're kind of skipping around here, but this is the the login action that we're going to be going over in a bit here. But you can see, you know, if you're using Amazon with ECR instead of the Docker Hub, you can just configure that to use that instead, and uh, it's all documented here. Cool. All right, let's go back to over here. And a lot of these, we're just going to be dealing with the defaults, right? So in that basic Docker build X video, I mentioned Kimu is just a way to emulate being able to run code in different CPU architectures. So, you know, this box is only going to be, I don't know, AMD 64 perhaps, but we need to build ARM 64 images. So Kimu is going to get things set up to where we can build those images for both of those types here. We don't really need to configure it beyond the defaults here. Likewise, when it, this step here for uh, setting up build X, this is going to create the context for us. That's going to be uh, compatible with building multiple platforms, et cetera, et cetera. We can just stick with the defaults for that one. We don't even need to worry about worry about it, which is pretty nice here. And then we have to log into the Docker Hub because before we can actually push images to our Docker Hub account, we do need to authenticate with the Docker Hub. And that's what this action is going to, or this step is going to be doing, technically action, I suppose. But uh, this one does need a little bit of configuration, right? We need to supply GitHub Actions, our credentials to log into the Docker Hub here because this is just a normal account that you have here. But you're not gonna wanna log in with your username and password that you literally would use in or log in if you were to go to the website here for hub.docker.com. So instead we can create a personal access token here and uh, Let's do that first before we get into this configuration here. So uh, inside of your Docker Hub account here, you know, after you log in, you do have this one little My Account section here, and you can go to security and whatever my email is public. So feel free to email me if you have questions or whatever, but you will want to create a new access token here. You can name this whatever you want and give it whatever permissions that you need. We're going to be fo focusing on just having uh, read and write permissions here because basically we need to write a new image to the Docker hub here, um, which means you will also have read permissions just built in with that. If you want to do delete as well, then uh, I don't know, maybe if you were to like remote delete a get tag, it can also delete that tag on the Docker Hub. That could be an interesting use case for wanting all three here. Uh, but I'm going to actually cancel that one because I already have a token made that does do a rewrite and delete here. But you can see some really good uses that right when it was last used, created, etc. And yeah, super handy, right, to have these different tokens so that you can revoke them as needed. For example, if I were to ever delete this project, then I can delete that token. I don't need to worry about like re-rolling my login password or something like that. Okay, cool. So let's say you've gone through the Docker Hub, you have this token, it's copied to a file temporarily, you know, maybe stored securely in a password manager or something like that. Don't want to lose that one. Then we need to go and configure your GitHub repo to have the ability to access these variables here. And these are named whatever you want that we're going to see in a second here. But yeah, if you go to your repo settings, I'm zoomed in like a maniac here, so I can't even see the settings one. But yeah, it's up there. And then you can go down here to secrets and variables, which is under security here. And there is an actions tab over here. Now keep in mind, you know, I am recording this video in early 2024. Who knows what GitHub's UI is going to look like in the future. But yeah, I'm sure you can find this around here. And then we have secrets here. I've actually created these repository secrets a couple of weeks ago when I hooked all the stuff up here. But yeah, you can just name your secret name, whatever you want, Docker Hub username, and then you put in the value here. Now, if you're pasting in the token, uh, you know, make sure that there's, there's no trailing and leading white space. You know, it should be exactly how it is. 
Now, technically the Docker Hub username isn't a secret. You know, mine is NickJJ. Just to pull it down from the Docker Hub, like you literally have to know uh, the username. But I will say that it is pretty convenient to have this added as a secret, just so it's like right next to the token in uh, GitHub's UI here. So that's why I made that one a secret here. But yeah, in this case, the username, you'll want to put your Docker Hub username. You know, mine was NickJJ, replace that with yours. And then you would add that secret. And then you would go and do the name here for the Docker Hub token as well. And then paste in your token that you just created here with that personal access token, save that one as well. And in the end, you're going to have two different repository secrets that you see here. And uh, you know, we can delete them as needed. We you can go to edit here and just edit them as needed. Notice how though that they're secrets, you know, you're just not able to see the previous value here. You know, it's not going to be pre-populated for you, but you can put in a new value if you want here, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to ruin that secret there or re-roll it so then, uh, you know, my workflows wouldn't work anymore. But yeah, after you have both of these repository secrets set up here, you know, we can go back to the YAML file down here and let me zoom back in so that sidebar goes away. And then we can just reference those variable names like this. There is this GitHub syntax where you do dollar sign double squigglies here, and then you can reference this variable here, in this case, secrets dot, and then whatever you decided to name this. It could be named anything you want. It doesn't need to be named Docker Hub username, but again, you should probably name these things to be descriptive of what they are. Now, there's all sorts of different uh, variables and secrets and objects that you can access within GitHub. There is uh, some documentation here that goes over a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna link to this one in the description. Feel free to check it out here. But yeah, I'm not gonna go over this in the video here, but that is how you access your secrets here. And then yeah, they just become available and they don't get printed out to the um, logs over here because they are secrets. They just get masked out, which is pretty nice. Yeah, okay, so now that we're logged into the Docker Hub, we can actually start building and pushing, which is probably the main event of this video. We have another action here that's uh, provided by Docker, and we just say, you know, the context of the current directory, so it's going to look for a Docker file in your current directory, and then it is going to run very similar build X commands that we went over in the previous video, where, yeah, it's just going to build for those different architectures or different platforms that we support. We can still see, right, comma separated the list of all the platforms that you want to support. We want to push that up to the Docker Hub in this case. You know, even in that previous video, remember, we had that push flag. There it is. And then, uh, yeah, we need to supply a, a list of tags. So in this case, this is YAML syntax to have um, a multi-line string. And, you know, at a convenience, every single individual line that you have here will end up being a new tag that gets pushed up. In this case, we have two. We have one for latest, and we also have one for the tag name. Uh, we'll get to what these are in a second here. But, yeah, that produces what we saw over here uh, somewhere in the Docker Hub. Yeah, over here where we have the different tags here. So this is pretty nice, right? Because we can, again, use some variables defined by GitHub to make some shortcuts here so we don't need to hard code stuff. So in this case, github.repository, you know, that will be listed somewhere down here. I think it's listed as an environment variable, but it becomes something you can just do github. That's all like documented here, right? GitHub.ref or ref, whatever, whatever. Um, you can see all sorts of different examples of how to use these things. But in this case, when you go to GitHub repository, this variable is going to be translated back to basically um, the slug for your repo. So it's going to be your GitHub username, which would be NickJJ in my case, slash, and then the project name, which would be web server in this case. So this just translates to NickJJ slash uh, web server. And then this ends up actually by convenience to be the same setup for the Docker Hub. So in my case, my GitHub username is the exact same setup as my Docker Hub username as well. So NickJJ, NickJJ. And then I name this repository web server and I name this one re repository web server. So in this case, like I can just piggyback off using the GitHub repository variable to do that. But if this were a different name, um, in case maybe your Docker Hub name is different, then you'll want to set that up to be your Docker Hub username instead, uh, not GitHub. So it's a very, very, very important distinction. If these are not the same, then you'll need to uh, modify this to put in whatever your Docker Hub username is, and then whatever you decided to do for the repository name. This will probably match whatever you have on GitHub, um, unless it's like some legacy project where you didn't do that. But in any case, important distinction, right? And then, yeah, we want to do a latest tag as well as the git tag. So github.ref name somewhere in the docs, we don't really need to even search for it, but this will evaluate back to the exact git tag that you pushed. And uh, this could be a different value when you're not dealing with git tags. But the good thing here is, you know, this is only executing when you're pushing tags. So this will be exactly like version, you know, v.0.34 evaluated to this. So we have things all set up to build and push images to the Docker Hub automatically. 
And um, yeah, you know, when you go to your actions over here, then you'll be able to see your individual releases going out here. We can see I had some failures along the way while I was getting this all working here. But if I go to Docker Publish here, yeah, we can see, well, syntax errors, something broke, something broke, and eventually I got it to work in the next one. Um, but yeah, we can see all the details here. Click into that, go and check out all the stuff here. We can see the building and pushing steps. Cool, that's actually a cleanup one, but because um, it said post there before the name, just distinction there, right? Post, post, post. These are all just cleanup steps by uh, GitHub Actions here. But we can see, you know, even the raw commands that were run, we can see build X, build was run, you know, somewhere in there is the push tag, you know, all sorts of different details are happening here. And you can see the masked out value here because my NickJJ value was considered a secret on the GitHub action side, so it just masked it out with a couple of asterisks there. But that is going to do it for this video. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Yeah, let us know how it goes. Did you publish something successfully using this workflow? And uh, if you ran into some problems, um, yeah, post it up in the comments and we'll do our best. With that said, that's going to be it for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.